Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Doom, doom awaits you on the third day. Oh, no. That's not good. There's doom from my burps. But no. So, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Pony Life Season 1, Episode 5. Bad Things number 3. In this episode, Rarity tries to get rid of her bad luck before it can ruin her relationship with a new friend. And she receives some much needed advice from an unexpected source herself. So, before we head in, first impressions are in order. So, Silva, what do you think? This was an episode that sort of redefined what I expected from Pony Life. Mostly because it was suddenly taking older characters and make them way more jerky. And also, having our lead characters be a bit more selfish. So, all in all, I, I really couldn't get behind this episode. Hmm, really now? Because yeah, it kind of had the opposite effect on me. Oh? It, in terms of, um, how do I put this, uh, character-wise, as in the mysterious friend, they did, dir- they did dirty on him. Like, they twisted his character from he's kind of a nice guy i mean he's really what you call this um not really self-centered or selfish but he's more of a chill down-to-earth guy and don't want to question much but he'll lead on to stuff once you know the character we're talking about you understand what i mean and as for Rarity herself, I kind of dig the quote-unquote selfish character. Like, it shows that selfishness doesn't benefit you kind of thing. Like, oh, she tries to be selfish, but it backfired on her. Wahaha. Wahaha? Wahaha? <laughs> but anywho, uh, I, can't, I can't get Rarity's tones down. <laughs> Same here, man. We we don't have the pitch. But anywho, for you guys at home, pause here if you haven't watched this yet, and go watch it first. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the episode. So anywho, we start off the episode with Rarity having... No, not Rarity. Uh, it's Pinkie Pie, sorry. Uh, Pinkie Pie go heading back to Sugar Cube Corner after... Um, doing the grocery shoppings, and I just noticed something about Sugar Cube Corner. Uh, the place is really whack. You're only just now noticing. Yeah, I, I did. I haven't really seen it properly, but the top of Sugar Cube Corner is Pinkie Pie's main. <laughs> huh, she went after she got it from the cake. She went through a serious rebranding. Oh yeah, <laughs> but very serious. St- yeah, but still, still, um, Pinky's walking home after doing some grocery shopping with Gummy, and suddenly she gets dragged into Sugar Cube Corner by a mysterious pony figure. And said pony figure is Rarity having a nervous breakdown. Rarity says that uh, she's going on a date with a old friend, Fancy Pants. Uh, Fancy Pants is smitten by Rarity and wants to go for a walk with her. In the park. Oh, yes. He wants to go for a walk. Yes, indeed. Probably go to a Starbucks later on. Oh, Norman, your your innocence is so appreciative. <laughs> uh, but, it's almost palatable. <laughs> but anywho, Rarity explains the situation about the bad luck thing. So, first thing she... One of the bad things she did was open a door and break some vase the other was what um broke a potion that pinky gave to her bandana and somehow it gave her enlightenment peace of mind and fancy pants here just says that oh that's rather unfortunate oh let's hope that you don't get the third bad luck and explains that all bad things come in three, like video game bosses. You have to kill them three times. But that, what if it's a fun boss fight? Isn't that a good thing? Oh, it is. But Nintendo character or Nintendo bosses always die three times. Hmm. That is the rule. 
Meanwhile, Ganon's off in the corner. I defy your logic. I'm trying to think. Is there a time where Ganon didn't die three times? Or is it twice? Usually Ganon so is tw- twice, right? It's twice for me. I usually kill him twice. Yeah, one is his Make base form and one is his peak form. That's rather morbid. Yeah, I usually kill him twice. It's, it's a good time. <laughs> it is. Uh, but but anywho, um, I'm going to move on for a bit and then I'll ask for opinions. So anywho, um, after Fancy Pants revealed that old bad thing coming tree, Rarity panics a bit and tells Pinky that your potion somehow gave this bandana some kind of power to see into your deepest, darker secret or fear. And when Pinky is worried, she is confronted with her self, what you call this, uh, mind. And she tells the real life Pinky that not all problems can be solved with sprinkles. And it scares the bejesus out of Pinky. And with that, I'm going to pause here. Silva, what do you think, man? Well, here's the thing. I've actually had a friend counsel me that you know bad things come in threes, but usually he did so uh, saying, yeah, you've had three bits of bad news, okay? You're, you're in the clear. I think it's more meant to be a reassurance rather than brace. What Fancy did was uh, superstition. Hmm. Just saying, oh... You, now you have to be. Now you have to wait for three more things, which just sets them on paranoia. Oh, gee, that's dumb. Also, I gotta say, I much prefer him in his in his swank outfit than just having a sweater tied around his uh, tied around his shoulders. I believe that's a signal that you're a douche. Yes. <laughs> and if you yes, notice, I believe that's the the douchey knot. It is true, but if you notice, there wait, around. Sorry, uh, do you notice the cutie mark? It's not the three crowns; it's a ring. Which uh, maybe, maybe because Rarity wants to get hitched to him until uh, she finds out. What happened but, to Fleur de Lis? Okay, you know it's funny if you rewatch uh, Sweet and Elite or really any episode. He shuns her. I mean, like, he just takes her for granted the whole way through. I figure at some point we should talk about Fancy Pants' character as depicted in Friendship is Magic versus uh, Pony Life. That won't be a good comparison, (laughs) but still. But I got to accept that it's Pony Life. This is not a one-to-one Fancy Pants conversion. Oh, that's true. That's true. I mean, uh, we, we all noticed a few things. I mean, okay, in... Season 9, there's the episode where uh, Twilight was meant to set up a party. Uh, it was a, a bad guy episode. What was it again? Uh, oh, uh, the Summer Sun setback? Yeah, that one. In that, Fancy Pants had his way of doing things because, well, it's try and true and he knows what he's doing. But no, Twilight wanted to do it her way because she has visions of stuff. And Fancy was like, okay, we'll try and do it your way, princess. You know what's best. I'm sure you know what's best. We have experience in doing this. Okay, go do so, go do so. Yes, that was when he became passive-aggressive pants. But it's true. Sometimes leaders, you can't tell them uh, head-on in how to do things because uh, usually leaders have egos, and if you bruise their ego it won't work well. They have to self-discover those kind of things. Either way, he's not... Uh, Rarity's discovering new depths of what the hey. <laughs> yeah, with this one, yeah, I, I totally agree. But anyway, um, what, what do you think about the whole thing? Like, okay, we talk about fancy spreading paranoia and superstitious. Rarity just biting it. Well, what about that? Well, at a Meltdown episode... I mean, it's kind of the point. Usually, I, I expect this from Twilight. Rarity is a new a new wrinkle. But she did have her moments in uh, Friendship is Magic where she did break down a bit. Oh, a bit? Putting Norman, it lightly. The ice cream industry, its stock raises several points if Rarity gets a bad review. 
In fact, I fully expect that there's a conspiracy within the uh, ice cream production community to implant a fake review to upset Rarity just so they can raise their stock. <laughs> I mean, I'm it's not going gonna... to... It's a vast Hagen dazs conspiracy. I'm not going to say anything much about that one, my friend. I mean, I, I know stuff. I, I know what's real and what's not. But it's more fun when you think about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, what you say is true. Whenever Rarity eats ice cream, we get rich. Yeah. I mean, come on. You could take it to the extreme, Norman. Picture hooded figures seated around a table. The, the lactose Illuminati. <laughs> the um... Laminati. Ah <laughs> uh, man, that's what we want you to think. But we're just guys in business suits sitting in front of a computer doing Zoom. <laughs> yes, but that sounds so much more boring and relevant to the times. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> but no, um, you know, honestly, uh, rarity breaking down rarity. This rarity is fun rarity, psycho rarity. But then, well, okay, I don't think we're what yet at the part where she's trying to make it happen. Oh no, not yet. Um, we we see her, um, gather around her friends, uh, giving them a chance to. Well, not all. Like, um, we, shall we continue? Yes. All right. So, like I was saying, um, Rarity barricade the door and Fluttershy burst through it like a boss, and Rarity, not Rarity, um. She discovers, sorry, um, Fluttershy discovers the red bandana that Rarity was wearing and puts it on. And now she discovers self-enlightenment. And not really self-enlightenment, she is introduced to her inner self. Uh, her inner self, do you remember the line, Silver? Because I have a hard time remembering this one. Oh, I I only kind of know or kind of remember. Let's see, Let's see if there's a transcript up on the wiki. I hope so. Ooh, there he is. Cool. Episode... This always gets a bit weird. I'm uh, used to going into episodes and transcripts for the show. It's Friendship is Magic. Okay, sorry. I, I found it. So, Ina Fertashai says, You speak softly, yet you carry within you the most wondrous and terrifying force of all. And Rarity just says, or just asks, well, was it bad? <laughs> oh, man, this reply from Fluttershy is just so good. No, nothing I didn't already know. <laughs> yeah, for all my talk about uh, Rarity and how they're depicting her, Fluttershy, I'd argue, is the, is the biggest change between shows. Oh, yeah. I mean... Not always in a good way. Oh, true. But here's the thing. I feel like all of the main six here have a major attitude change in some shape or form. With Twilight, we get to see her be more lax in terms of her daily life. Uh, usually, when you're the princess of a friendship, you do work. And when since you're running a school, you're quite busy. In Pony Life, we didn't, we don't see that at all. So she has time to do what she wants. Applejack here is more down to earth and more in tune with the audience. Like she can see us. Literally. Yep. Pinkie Pie? Did she change? I'm trying to remember, but I can't find or I can't, I don't see it. Mm, she's more. How to put this? She's more competitive, uh, but still fun-loving. But she does invest more in a competition than she used to. Mm, all right. Oh. Rainbow, I think, has actually had an attitude improvement. Hmm. Also, well, she started out a bit more selfish and had to have some lessons in waking up from that, but. This rainbow is much more other-centered, and as we saw with Dishwar Slug, she's more caring and aware about the emotions of others around her, mm. which is why for a time she couldn't best slog in being a selfish jerk. Yay. Oh, that's good. Rarity, on the other hand, I feel like 
she's still the same in terms of generosity and how kind she is. But at the same time, uh, the new version of her feels more fun. She's more willing to do stuff just to be spontaneous, just to be more fun. More, a fun character, I would say. But she's also a bit more flanderized. She she starts bawling at the drop of a hat, literally, <laughs> and uh, and her thing. And now everyone has these strange gimmicks. Fluttershy grows and shrinks depending on her mood. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Twilight shatters quite literally because and, of uh, the... pressure. Yeah. Pressure coming down on you. Uh, let's see, but Rarity both has her fainting couch and, couch and pukes up gems. Wait, what? When did that happen? Yeah. Oh, uh, give it time. Oh. But yeah, she'll like cough or or even at one point become physically ill and it's it's gems. Why Spike is not like slipping her an epicac, I don't know. <laughs> no voice. And what else? Uh, Applejack is well. She's more. She stole Pinky's breaking the third wall. True, and yeah, fourth fl- wall. Flat. Uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess. But all in all, it's interesting. It's an interesting change. But um, I, I think we're kind of missing the point here. So, yeah. Um, Fluttershy uh, sees her in herself and doesn't really bother. Like she, she knows this. She, she's been this. And now comes the part where we see Rarity trying to make the third bad thing happen. It starts out with Rainbow Dash and Twilight share, uh, trying to eat a cake. And the other asks, oh, I'm um, sorry, the other tells the other to go eat first. And you, you know one of these scenarios where, oh, go, you can take the first bite. Oh, no, no, you should take the first bite. And now they fight. And Rarity here is like very excited. Oh, you two gonna fight? Oh, the drama! Oh, but the two are not that dumb, and they just split it down the middle. Applejack comes up to Rarity and just asks, "What's going on here? Like, why are you like this?" And Rarity explains the whole bad thing coming tree kind of thing. And yeah, um, Rarity here just breaks down and says, oh, we need to make the third bad thing happen on our own. Yes. Then that ends part one. So part two comes along with Pinkie Pie trying to bake a cake for the contest. Uh, Said cake is, I I forgot what the cake is, but I guess it should be good. And here we see Rarity trying to sabotage it. But here's the part that I really enjoy. Uh, Tabetha Saint Germain here really played off the whole psychotic rarity thing. It's similar to Golem. What was the name? What's the guy name again? Yep. Yep. Got him. Got him. Golem. Yes. Golem from Lord of the Ring. Like you, you have the inner evil self, and then the good self trying not to sabotage Pinky and stuff like. She right now is trying to sabotage Pinky so that the third bad thing will happen and yeah, the bad luck will just move away or pass away. And the the conversation that she has here is just so good, man. And I'm going to pause here. So what do you think, Silver? Well, okay, Tabitha St. Germain just brings uh, such passion and energy to uh, her role. So I certainly can't complain. I mean, it's certainly a different take than in the past. Rarity has talked to herself, but she's always tried to be dignified. This is, I don't know if fans will accept this different presentation of Rarity going from, uh, you really shouldn't spy Rarity. Oh, but it's so much fun, Rarity. Now she, now it's like you say, a golem talk. It's funny. The biggest hurdle Pony Life faces is the fact that it's not friendship is magic, and it's it can be hard to accept that sometimes. 
uh, that maybe uh, these character presentations won't be one for one. That's true, and and I, I think that's the quote unquote setback that the show have, and I think they realize it. So they kind of hope that the fans will give it a shot and uh, give it a chance. You might like it, and I for one will say that yeah, episode number. Five is turning me slowly because this episode was a lot of fun. Just looking at how insane Rarity is becoming. Well, I'm not quite. We're not quite there yet because, well, for me, it's seeing Rarity trying to sabotage her friends. I'm just like wow, just wow, really not liking you at this moment, Rarity. Yeah, but the way, but but the thing is, every time when she tries to sabotage. When she just tries to sabotage, something bad happens to her. So that tells us that um, doing something bad is not going to be in your best interests. So that's good. But anywho, um, anything else to add, Silver? Nope, not the moment. All right. So when Pinky tries to sabotage Pinky's... Sorry, when Rarity tries to sabotage Pinky's plan... Um, Gummy comes along to defend her master and they fight on the roof or fight on the ceiling and Gummy is strong. G- Gummy here is strong. They do a few break down, beat him up and stuff and uh, Gummy here just throws pink, sorry, throws rarity into the uh, what you call this pantry and the bandana falls onto Rarity's head and they have a inner monologue about how you're not doing the right thing and uh, you should not force the bad things going on and stuff. And uh, inner Rarity just says that for a few seconds inside here is equivalent to a few minutes, hours or years outside in the real world. And Rarity panics and she has a breakdown or a mental breakdown in her own head. Um, the rest of the crew finds Rarity inside the pantry and kind of frees her. Rarity asks, oh no, how long have I been stuck in here? Oh, the what was me? The, what you will call this? Uh, walk with fancy pants is probably over. And Twilight just says, You've been in here for just 30 seconds. That this that revelation there is just insane. Well, it appears that uh, inner rarity is a bit of a troll. And also she's lonely. Nobody comes in to talk to her. <laughs> but with that, Fancy Pants is there to pick rarity up for her walks. And, well, they go and walk. Um, whatever bad thing number three happens, happens. Like, she has accepted her fate. So, on her walk with Fancy Pants, um, Rarity discovers that, oh, you're bad thing number three. I don't like you. You're a self-centered, snobbish jerk. I'm out of here. Bye-bye, Fancy. I'm going to go hang out with my real friends. So Rarity goes back to Sugar Cube Corner to enjoy a nice milkshake, I hope, and uh, hugs it out with Pinkie Pie, and episode ends. So Silver, what do you think? Like, um, overall, it's a silly episode and can be a lot of fun, but it also highlights the fact this is not your average My Little Pony. This is not Friendship Is Magic. You gotta let that go if you're to enjoy it. And I got I gotta say it was less enjoyable to see Rarity trying, actively trying to sabotage her friends. I mean, that's where you think, wow, this this is asking a lot. I hope the character survives this presentation. Goodness knows Fancy Pants has not. <laughs> yeah, I mean Fancy Pants is the only character here to get a, what do you call this, bad rendition of himself. Just something, just, he, he just got the uh, bad end of the stick. Like, he, like I mentioned before, he was not 
bad. He was an okay character. Passive aggressive much? Yes. And kind of a cool dude. Uh, I, I remember what? He helped out Spike with the... Oh no, there's something. Some, there's a pony else, but still. Um, he He's there. Like, he, he doesn't really... Sorry, he isn't really mean. He's just a cool dude with his own thing to do. I've got my own interpretation of the fancy pants, but that comes later. All right, okay. So, anywho, um, yeah, fancy, to me, fancy pants is kind of chill. Uh, yeah, he, he's chill. He's, he's a cool guy. Um, noble, but he's just going with the flow and whatnot. He is fun and cool. What about you? What, what's your interpretation of him? All right. When I first, when he first debuted in Sweden Elite, I thought, "Hey, finally we have some positive male characters." It's like, I understand this is a show for young women, but why that's synonymous with guys are jerks? Uh, that strikes me as just as bad a stereotype as women are just damsels, uh, or or just date uh, targets. So. That was positive, but over time, you began to see fan- different aspects of Fancy Pants. And I think the, including, as you said, uh, he didn't help Spike right away. At first, he was more leading a lynch mob against Twilight Sparkle when he thought that she was sabotaging uh, Canterlot. And then there's his very prideful and indignant style and being quite rude as he's waiting for this swan celebration. So with each new bit of info, I look back and I realize Fancy Pants is a product of his culture. He is st- he's still victim to Canterlot pride and he knows his status and has certain expectations. So humility has gone bye-bye. Don't think that's an option anymore. But it, the funny thing is he's the most easygoing and approachable in a culture that's pretty haughty. So while he's not immune to that pride, he is still a better example than many. Like Jetstream and Upper Crust. Oh, no, those can't go jump off a cliff. So I'm not sure Fancy's as positive, but this, this is presenting him with really no redeeming qualities. Yeah, th- this one here just makes him... Your typ- atypical jerk character, like oh god, like oh now I, I now I remember who he is, Prince Blue Blood, a bit like Prince Blue Blood, who was more in the background. He never got a second try at the at the show, though. Uh, I will. Uh, actually, what was I going to point out? Oh yes, well, I'm back to that darn sweater around his, his uh, fancy pants shoulders. Look, I've only ever seen one per, one set of people wearing such a thing, and it was fashion mo- uh, catalog models. <laughs> no one wears that in real life, as far as I can tell. Oh, except in golf clubs and rich places. I don't go to those. Same here, man. <laughs> so I've never seen anyone, and they usually have like this punch me smile. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I say, buddy, I do so enjoy my my carefree and rich lifestyle. Can you believe if I was one of those filthy commoners? <laughs> I'm so white. <laughs> oh man, you feel like just giving him one four. One what for? I'm gonna give him all four. <laughs> I'm uh, all five, all five fingers in the form of a knuckle. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, what else, man? What else? I don't. Know, I think I've. I think I've had my. Uh, Social stra- strata rant. All right. Um, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I, I really enjoy um, looking at Rarity just going insane. The delivery from Tabitha is just awesome. Like, you can you can just imagine her flailing her arms, just going insane, and everybody in the studio or in the booth trying not to laugh at what she's doing and the voices she makes because if you listen to her voice uh she she's changing it on the fly and uh like if you've seen behind the scene videos of uh, pony life or no sorry not pony life of friendship is magic you can tell that 
that's her doing it on the fly. Like she has the talent and ability just to do it because this, um, she's been playing Rarity for almost ten years now. So yeah, R- Rarity here, even though the character has changed a lot in terms of moral value and standing, it's still a fun rendition of her. Like I can't wait to see future episodes where if they carry this on or if they tone it down a bit. So we'll just have to wait and see what they do. Uh, other than that, Fancy Pants, like I gave my views on him. He, he's a chill guy, but this one here is just a jerk. But yeah, um, overall, I enjoyed it. It was a interesting show. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's good. What about you, Silva? Well, I... The thing with Pony Life episodes for me is that they're so short, it's hard to really get invested in the story. I mean, it seems like the conflict is only just established before it is resolved. And now they've they've left behind the two-parter format. Now we're just... Uh, well, no, wait, this was still a two-parter, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. This is the this is a two-parter. That's going to change in later episodes. That could be on the next one. Think? But either way, uh, I mean, it's fun. It's silly. It doesn't really get me like stoked about the characters or wanting to to look deeper. It's just quick fun, kind of keep the fandom, well, keep the franchise interest alive as we make our way towards twenty twenty one and the start of Gen five. Uh huh. Yep. Like. Uh, it's been revealed to us that Pony Life will have a second season followed by the movie and followed by Gen 5 Part 1 and Part 2. And meanwhile, who knows? Maybe the end of Pony Life will be a meteor is going to destroy us all. Oh, our part of this franchise is over. Goodbye. You want to know what would be a... Um, Bad, what, what do I call this? Middle finger to the fans for Pony Life? What, finding out it was just a dream of Gen 5? Oh no, that is true, but not Gen 5. It's just Pinky's dream. Like, uh, Friendship is Magic. Like, it shows Pinky waking up and we get the normal show style. Or, or it could be the CG Hello Pinkie Pie. Oh, God. You mean the clay animation or whatever stop motion thingy? Uh, the CG animation. Oh, God. Technically, we already know that that uh, the clay, the stop motion ponies are watching Pony Life in a the theater. Oh. <laughs> that's my that's how they ended. That's how they ended the, the stop motion. They, they all get in a the theater and are trying to get the optimal scene arrangements because Pony Life is starting. Uh-huh. And, yeah, I, I hope they get their money back. <laughs> Norman, uh, I kid. I, I thought kid. you enjoyed this episode, but now, oh, the harshness. Oh, I do, I do. Uh, but anywho, Silver, so, um, shall we wrap it up? We shall. All right. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dimensiongmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitter and Twitter. Uh, it's right. The MBS Show's Twitter is at uh, the MBS Show. Yeah, and my personal to take on is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, lots of places. Uh, you can find me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. And you can keep up with my GIF Wars with Lightning Bliss. Uh, you can find me on, you can support my uh, videos and tutorials either on Ko-fi or uh, Patreon, just do a search for Silver Quill. Uh, and a search for Silver Quill and after the fact on YouTube shall reveal me. But in a, but in a polite way. Yay! And I do uh, art streams every Friday, provided I can get a uh, freaking Streamlabs to work with me here. Work with me, come on. Oh, I'm sure you can, man. Like, it's one of those uh, new computer um, stumbles that you have to go through. And after that, it's all good. It's all gravy. It's a, it's a shakedown, I tell you. A shakedown period. <laughs> And uh, on Wednesdays, if there be a new comic that week, you can find me writing up a review on Equestria Daily. All right. That's great. Uh, Go watch his content. Go read his article, guys. They're really awesome. 
So anyway, uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PanelLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also Massa Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vakril. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MPS show. See ya! I say, Kiki, let's head out to the golf course and enjoy another fine round. Just after I tie this sweater around my shoulders. <laughs> oh, I've been shot. Good. <laughs>